here to preview Blinken's visit to France is our international affairs commentator, Douglas Herbert. Hi, Doug. So Blinken is a fluent French speaker. He actually spent some time living here as a child. Uh, do we think that his better understanding than most of French culture will be helpful in these meetings with Emmanuel Macron? Yeah, I mean, and that's not a very high bar. It will be helpful, right? Speaking the same language as your interlocutor helps to break the ice. We're talking diplomacy. Diplomacy is often uh, very rich in symbolism and that sort of camaraderie, the chemistry that you strike with the person that you're trying to, to uh, come to terms with. So, of course, the fact that when he meets with France's foreign minister, Jean-Yves Le Drian, the fact that when he sits down with Emmanuel Macron later today, that they will be speaking in French, of course it helps. They won't have these translators hovering over their shoulders, whispering in their ears. They can speak to each other literally in a common language, in the same language. That's Macron it. does like to use his English, though, to show everything. Absolutely, English Macron. But I, I suspect that they will be that they will be speaking French today. But uh, you know, that said, the, the mere fact of speaking someone's language, and the mere fact that yes, he spends a good part of his childhood in the 1970s, uh, as in his teenage years here in France, um, does not necessarily mean that they are on the same wavelength. Remember, he is America's chief diplomat. His foreign policy is very much in the traditionalist American mold. His boss is Joe. Biden, who has a very hard American foreign policy, which is one of the reasons why when he was recently in Europe, Biden, uh, they weren't all on the same page all the time. The Europeans at the end of the day said, yes, sure, he's here to do business with us. Sure, America's back. Sure, we're relieved. But that, that very fact, he's still an American and his foreign policy is still America's national interest. The same thing goes with Blinken. And if anything, Blinken might be closer uh, in a foreign policy sense and ideologically with Germany, that traditionalist sort of America, American track. Remember under Barack Obama, who do you call first? Who's the number, the go-to number in Europe? You call Berlin, not Paris. And that right now is the stance they're returning to today. Well, we saw another hint of that yesterday. Uh, Blinken met with German Chancellor Angela Merkel. Yep. And during that sit down, he told her that the U.S. has, quote, no better friend in the world than Germany. You know, that, was <laughs> a, that was a comment that surprised some, yeah. especially since the U.K. historically has had the, quote, unquote, special friendship. Yeah, the special the relationship. Special relationship exactly. with the United so States. Uh, you know, he's about to sit down with Macron. Do you think maybe he's feeling a little snubbed or he might get a call from Boris Johnson? I know, so it it does. It, look, it raises the question, what does he say to Macron? Don't worry, you're my second best <laughs> friend. No. But on a serious note, look, you could say maybe he does say that to everyone. But uh, the best thing, friend thing, let's not make too much of that line. What he what he's essentially saying to Angela Merkel is what I was saying before. He is, this is a return to the sort of the post-war diplomatic arc, foreign policy architecture of the U.S., where Germany, for better or for worse, was the go-to ally. France was definitely a strong ally. Oldest France, ally. Oldest ally, forever evoking Lafayette and then and the revolution and the role Lafayette played in the American Revolution. That's all there. No one's taking that away from France. But at the end of the day, Germany has traditionally been the strong power in Europe. And uh, so, yeah, he told Angela Merkel that because he, I think he also figures on big issues like Russia. Angela Merkel has also been always sort of the harder diplomatic link. If anyone was able to speak to Vladimir Putin and perhaps placate him in some way and bring him on board. Board. It was Angela Merkel was seen as the go-to woman. Now, obviously, she only has a few months left in power. The dynamic might change depending on who uh, Germany's next leader is. But that transatlantic relationship and the fact that Germany always very much accepted the American security umbrella, uh, that was hardwired into America's foreign policy. And it remains so today. So, yeah, that's why Germany remains, at the end of the day, America's best friend in the world when it comes to Europe, at least. International Affairs Commander. Douglas Herbert breaking down the friendships. <laughs> best, closest, second across <laughs> Europe with the U.S. Best Thank friend. you. <laughs>